are going further up the mountains to access timber supply. Roads are becoming more difficult and more complicated to get to those areas, and switchbacks are a big component of the road infrastructure. A switchback is a, a sharp, almost 180 degree turn in a road where we can gain or lose elevation quite rapidly. Switchback, I'd say, is probably the most critical aspect of a road that needs to be built safe. It's important to make sure that the switchbacks are built safe to haul on, not just for the law truck drivers, but also for recreational users of the roads. They have to be built with the truck in mind and the trucker in mind, that we have to be able to navigate these things safely. Switchbacks are critical to any road system. If we don't get that switchback right, it is a danger, it's a hazard. When I watch a, a 63,000 kilogram loaded logging truck successfully navigating a steep terrain switchback, it makes it really clear to me how things could go wrong if it wasn't built properly. I'm Matt Campbell. I'm the Innovation and Engineering Coordinator with Canfor. We're spending extra effort on switchback planning and layout because the extra effort and time spent on that stage can save huge amounts of costs and headaches later on in the process. And it can also avoid creating potentially unsafe conditions at a later stage as well. A switchback is a, a curve over a section of steep terrain encompassing 180 degrees that requires balanced cuts and fills to achieve a suitable grade. When we're building a switchback, we need to make sure that it has suitable design grades into and out of the switchback, not over steep, as well as through the middle of the curve itself, and an adequate radius to allow vehicles to pass through it safely. What might make a switchback unsafe is whether they're not wide enough, or they're too steep, or the slopes laying the wrong way. Some of the hazards that can happen on an unsafe switchback is you can totally lose control of the truck and cause a catastrophic accident. It's important to train people properly on all aspects of switchbacks because they're an extremely high hazard area of our operations in the forest sector, and we want to ensure they're done properly. Once we know the, the control points that are governing or constraining our potential access into the area, we can move on from there into planning the switchback locations and the road location itself. The first stage would be an office review of where the ideal location is going to be on the landscape for the switchback, followed with layout and field verification. My name is Ken McGrogan. I'm a forest planner. It's important to get boots on the ground to verify the site conditions. I will check for the feasibility of the planned road locations uh, to make sure that the terrain is suitable for those roads. I will look for other environmental factors such as wildlife habitat, slope stability, riparian features that we need to protect. When I'm going to the field to lay out a switchback, I look for a suitable bench where I will be able to get in an adequate curve radius on the gentlest slope possible. Once I've established the curve, then I will ribbon in on the entrance and the exit of that curve a 0% grade for at least 50 meters. The purpose of the 0% grade on the entrance and exit of the curve is to allow the road construction crew to do sufficient cuts and fills to create an adequate grade. The traverse stage is basically the collection of the data of the grade of the ribboned line and the side slopes, and that happens directly after layout, and that is where we collect the information to pass on to the road designers. I make notes in my field notebook, and I collect slope shots on the uphill and downhill side of the center line, collect an estimate of depth of material on top of rock, and also interstation grade of the center line. 
Switchbacks are probably the most expensive component of road construction. So the cost of me field verifying the plan is really insubstantial compared to the cost of road construction. So it's crucial that we verify that it's feasible before the equipment shows up. The second phase of a switchback would be the road design phase where we use computer software programs that allow us to do geometric modeling of the road location using the field data that we've collected to essentially prove we can build a safe switchback at that location. My name is Rod Metcalf. I'm a project manager developing the roads primarily in the road design. Good layout makes it easy to design. I review all the information that I get from the field crews, and when I start to do my design, I want to make sure that the switchback is located in the proper location, that we have areas that they can slow down coming into a switchback, make sure that the switchback is not too steep or sloped the wrong way so that the trailers or the vehicle's gonna slide, make sure that we don't have water running down the switchback. I want to make sure that uh, a loaded truck a low bed or, or any vehicle can get around that corner safely. Normally my uphill side is a cut and I use that fill to build the lower side of the road. I make sure that I have the right material to support the fills, be it rock, be it soil, what the material will support for weight. Is it a material that will erode? Basically it comes back to safety is number one. When I'm done with my design, I review it with the engineer, he signs and seals it, and we send it off to the client for them to start construction. For the construction phase of a switchback, we're taking the road design that was created in the office environment and transferring it into reality. My name's Darren Tamman. I'm an operational supervisor for road construction for Canfor, and I'm a registered professional forester. So my role representing the company in terms of the actual construction phase is to take what planning and permitting have signed off in the office. Those are all professional documents that we need to make sure we transfer over and implement on the ground. So all that information will be discussed with the contractor out on site and uh, make sure that they understand what's happening to that plan. And we'll also identify safety hazards out here. It could be danger trees, rock outcrops, public hazards. So do the operators know what needs to happen on the ground prior to actually implementing that plan? The more communication that's there, the better off we are. I'm the first one that has to find the ribbons and make sense of them. And then I use my phone with the Venza maps on there to make sure that we're in the right place. I start by pushing the trees over and making the trails. And then uh, Darcy will come behind me with the harvester and start removing the trees. Once he has all the timber removed, the cat will start cutting in the road grade. We are using 330X graders. The cats that we provide are D8. Uh, T Caterpillar. They are a 90,000 pound machine, generally, and in the country that we work here, we can't get away with much less than that. And it's just, we need big equipment. We'll be shooting for an eight or 10% switchback, and the information that comes to us from switchback notes will uh, have length of cuts, depth of fills. We just need to know that, yeah, the cuts up here are gonna be, you know, five, six meters tall. The fills are gonna be five, six meters deep, and we can make it happen. Out here, we target a 15 meter to 18 meter radius corner. We wanna make sure that the switchback is built in a safe manner that logging trucks can come back around now and down that slope. From a design standpoint, uh, looking at the, the center line, uh, the most important thing is to have sufficient lengths of zero grade going into the switchback and coming out of the switchback. The point of the zero grade in and out of the switchback is to allow you to balance your cuts and fills as you create the, the shape of the switchback.
professionally, it's signed off. So is that switchback designed, built, and safe enough for a eight axle loaded logging truck to come down there safely during all types of conditions? It's very expensive to build switchbacks, so really good value in spending time ahead of time making sure that that switchback's designed, engineered, and laid out in the field uh, properly so that the next phase of work is completed efficiently and safely. I'm Ray Rybachuk. I've been a log hauler now going on 38 and a half years. As a driver of the truck, you're constantly surveying the road you want to make sure that you're going to be able to navigate that switchback safely. So you're looking for things like, how is it built? Is it leaning in? Is it leaning out? Is it flat? The material that it's made out of, um, you could go up the road and it could be completely bare and dry and you have a rainstorm and then it's wet and that's going to change the whole dynamics of that switchback. So you're going to have to choose your gear what you can go around there. You're gonna to have to constantly check your mirrors. You're gonna to have to make sure you're positioned right on the road and that your trailer's following the right track behind you. It's usually the job of the licensee that hires the contractor to look after and, and, and ensure these switchbacks are built properly and maintained so that we can get around them safely. Owners of roads have an obligation to create a safe workplace for their employees and contractors. They can accomplish that through utilizing the proper professionals at every stage. Spend a little more time, find those benches, find those places where switchbacks will work. It's gonna save you time, it's gonna save you money, and it's gonna save lives. Safety, just ensuring that switchbacks are built at a sufficient grade that it makes it safe to haul on not just for the log truck drivers, but also for recreational users of throughout. Professional obligations, making sure that everything is done uh, in a manner that provides a safe road infrastructure for the people that are gonna follow us, which are the loggers, etc. We always have the right to refuse unsafe work. Turn around and go home. If you're not safe, you don't feel comfortable, just turn around and go home. So if a logger or a contractor says they can't work, there's downtime, so it's good that we plan, prepare ahead of time, and build that switchback so that operations can continue efficiently and safely at the work site. We take a lot of pride in everybody getting home at the end of the day. We want a safe road that meets everybody's goals.